So I wanted to talk today about, I don't know, urban nature. How it's possible to connect with nature whilst living in the city. How we can inject a bit more uh, of those vibes <laughs> into our daily lives if we so choose. Uh, why it might be good for us, the places that we live. So many of us dream of moving out of the cities in which we live, getting a cottage, living off the land, getting chickens and solar panels, maybe a pottery wheel in the shed so we can throw our own plates off of which we will eat our own specially grown produce. And for some people that's the right choice. And I think it's nice, it's a nice aspiration, the kind of extreme cottage core set up but I think for a lot of us it is unrealistic and that kind of lifestyle and that kind of aspiration potentially even has some downsides to it on a societal level but if you are someone who has a deep ingrained craving for the countryside and the more cottage core life the one thing which I think social media sometimes promotes is just a dream of the day in which you can leave and put off any kind of natural connection until that time. But I think that's uh, I think that's not the way to do it. I think that whilst we're never going to be living our best like crusty hippie solar panel dreams, you know, in a major city, we can get pretty close. Or we can make a couple of steps and those steps can make a huge difference to us and the urban environments in which we live and it's really a win-win. I'm a big believer in you know you have to start where you are with your, um, your goals, your politics, your change, um, instead of putting everything off until some special romanticized future. You need to work, work on changing things where you are in the moment and for most of us, my generation, that means living in cities. Cities don't have to be these like <sighs> devoid of nature, sterilised places. They can be full of pretty varied ecosystems. We don't need to knock all the buildings down. It can just be a case of planting a couple of herbs on your windowsill. Things that um, insects and bees and pollinators can go to. You get the, you get the right plants for insects. I and mean, then suddenly you've got the birds that eat the insects, you've got bats, you've got ecosystems, you've got these rich things. Changing the way that we plant parks, bringing in more community spaces, bringing in more allotments, bringing in more shared areas. So that everyone can be in touch with the place and the, the nature they live in. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's good for all of us to help cultivate more natural ecosystems within cities because it breeds like awareness of the natural world, it's educational, it's great for our mental health um, and I think even if you're only growing like one tub of tomatoes a year, just having a little connection to the food we eat can help us to be mindful, it can help us to make better decisions, more sustainable decisions about where we get our food from and it, it's progress we can make small things we can do in the now and in the present, where we are. Yeah, and I think people are very snobby about urban nature. If it, if it lives and grows in the city, then it's inherently bad. Foxes, the worst. Squirrels, just fluffy rats. Trees, all diseased or whatever. And I think it's just because they are, they are urban or they're living in ecosystems which we consider unnatural, for example, because foxes and will scavenge off humans. Foxes and crows and ravens will use human leavings as their main food source. So we consider them to be unnatural or like created, even though we're just another animal. All that's happened is we've created a different ecosystem and various species have adapted and woven themselves into that ecosystem, which is not their fault. I should note, foxes, they, there are some reasons people don't like them. Uh, they make horrible noises when they are mating, all hours of the night. And also, last year, one of these very cute guys that hang out in my back garden 
snuck into my house, ate one of my housemates' shoes, and then pooed on my sofa. And I have yet to quite forgive them for that. If you did want to wage war on the urban fox population, I would highly recommend any of the methods detailed in this article. I don't think they'd be very successful, but it would be really fun for me to witness and for your neighbours to witness. And, you know, all these people talking about how squirrels are just like fluffy rats and vermins or how like pigeons are just flying rats. Everything's just a rat these days. And it's like, there are like a hundred species of pigeon. There are a whole thing. There are extinct pigeons. The passenger pigeon went extinct. It was hunted in America. You know, they're proper animals, guys. <laughs> well, you know, people who are mean about squirrels. It's like, do you also hate, like, pine martins or lemurs? And if, and if you don't, then why is the difference just that one of them lives in your cities and therefore seems common and lowly, whilst the other lives in, like, a mythical woodland somewhere else and is hard to see and is therefore special and interesting? Yeah, and like pigeons are great. I love the little cooing noises they make. They kind of go hoo, 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 like that. Um, and I think it's a really nice bird call. And they don't really do any harm. You've got to be nicer to pigeons. I can't tell if that was a tangent. The whole dream of like owning your own cottage or ranch or farm and being self sufficient might not be such a good thing anyway. What do all those things have in common? They're isolated. They're all about you being on your own and not needing anyone, having your own space that you can do what you want. And yes, there's like an eco-friendly element to it. You want to be removed from big oil and all the systems of injustice that are all around us. But you're also removing yourself potentially from people. One of the great things about urban projects like gardening and allotments um, and green spaces is that you're sharing with people. You're meeting people, you're gaining new expertise, you're building communities, and you might not have your very own crop of tomatoes that you personally get to take home. But you will have helped grow food for a group. You will be feeding not just yourself, but each other. And I think that is a lovely thing and in many ways like kind of better kind of cooler than just having a cottage garden somewhere and the great thing about doing a little tiny bit of gardening and a bit of being in touch with nature in a city is that there are many million other people in london generally a bunch wherever you are of other people and your little contribution to nature is going to help all the people around you if you have some plants that support pollinators that butterflies can grow on. People are gonna people are gonna be able to enjoy those butterflies. And if a few more people in your immediate vicinity also plant some pollinator friendly herbs, uh, or stop using pesticides, you could create a little wildlife corridor. You could boost up your local ecosystem. You can collectively make a green city, which is, if not quite as alive, as the, uh, the countryside, they're not far off. And it's kind of within all our power. I mean, I've tried growing things on windowsills and balconies, and I will say it is more frustrating than having an outdoor space. <laughs> and again, like I know that my rental, my overgrown rental garden, where I have limits on what I can do and where, uh, is still a lot harder to grow in than if I had an allotment, than if I had an open field. <laughs> You're always working of limitations and you're always kind of pushing against the, the, the urban fabric in which you live. But I think it's worth having a go. And you know, like succulents are nice. I own succulents, I care for them. Um, they keep me happy in the winter when everything else is, uh, is brown and dead. But I don't know. They're a bit of a strange one, they've become so popular, because especially in somewhere like Northern Europe, they're not native plants, they, they're not built for this environment, they have to live inside, they can't really interact, 
with the rest of the ecosystem. Like, their insects wouldn't know what to do with these guys, this orchid. Or maybe spider mites, but not many. Not many insects. They don't have flowers that can, like, feed bees. They don't have leaves that we can eat. They're, they're kind of just these visual, semi-decorative accoutrements that we have all um, taken into our homes so that we can get more nature, which is good. And they are natural and you can have a lovely relationship with your plants. But the reciprocal relationship does stop with them, at, like here. Whereas if you have something you can eat, which you can smell, which is interacting with your local ecosystem, it's like up here you know? Um, I want to blame capitalism. I feel like it might be a capitalist thing that tricked us all into um, buying these uh, these palm trees from Ikea instead of um, getting a pot of mint that we can make into tea. It probably isn't and, <laughs> and I'm not, I don't want to like succulent shame anyone. Pot plants are cool but I don't think they are a true substitute. And also, you can do both. You can have one of these and try and grow some rosemary. Um, so yeah, if you want to have a go at um, getting in touch with urban nature, I would recommend, yeah, like the Wildlife Association or any other charities or organisations in the place where you live that, um, you know, campaign for nature, preserving nature, preserving ecosystems, there are probably more things going on in your city than you would believe and those kinds of places can be great resources for finding them out. You can find local community spaces if you don't have access to any green space of your own and if you can't find a local community space you can harass the people who, who decide these kinds of things until you get one. In the UK, I believe that there's something, there's a law that every single person is entitled to an allotment. It's just a right that you have. <laughs> it's not It's not really enforceable as things currently stand, but there are legal protections. Schemes or avenues to create gardens and allotments and things like that. Um, yeah, you can kind of support initiatives for managing green areas that do exist in more eco-friendly ways. Letting weeds grow around the edge of previously ornamental lakes, uh, letting weeds grow in civic lawns because actually weeds are very good for insects and the environment in nature, and I don't know, not littering I guess, <laughs> I don't know, other things, what else? Yeah, and if you do have a bit of green space or a sunny windowsill, try planting something that is native and is local. Yeah, and see how it does and see how things interact with it. You can find lists of plants which are good for pollinators somewhere. They might be local because the whole point of ecosystems is they are individualised and they're all different. I mean, I'm lucky because I live in London, which is a very sprawling and quite suburban city. There's lots of parks, but we've got a lot of trees, we've got a lot of birds, we've got not a terrible ecosystem. We are um, one of the best places to find the endangered stag beetle in um, all of the United Kingdom. Many species of bats. I, um, I watched a lot of The Good Life on TV as a child, which for anyone who doesn't know, is a, it's a sitcom about two sets of suburban neighbours with intense sexual chemistry. And you're always like, whoa, are they gonna swing? Is it gonna finally happen? Um, but there's also a subplot running through that show of, a, of one of the couples has started like a self-sufficient garden in their suburban garden. They've got pigs, they've got a power generator, they're living the good life. So yeah, I'm very primed to think that all English terrace houses couldn't just become small holdings with a bit of imagination and a pig or two. But I don't see why not. Thank you for this video, I know it's slightly different. And yeah, you keep an eye out for nature in all the strange ways it manifests in cities. Focus more on where you are and less on where you could be or might be.